Hello everyone, this is Be Belt Dan, and welcome to Blender 3D. For those of you who do not know, Blender 3D is a free modeling program that you can download off the internet. Don't let the idea or the fact that it is free fool you, because Blender is actually a very powerful program. It has a lot of interesting features, and it can be used not only to make 3D models, but also to do animations, as well as games, and you can actually do some video compositing in it as well. We're also going to be using it, though, for today to be building a starship. If you look over here, some of you may recognize this. This is the Enterprise, more specifically the NCC-1701-J. It is the Enterprise from the 29th century. It was seen in an episode of Star Trek Enterprise called Zaddy Prime. Now, in that episode, all we ever saw, though, was just a small glimpse of from the outside of the ship and we also saw a screen that was standing behind the character General Archer that showed us what the ship looked like from the outside from a top kind of a three-quarter top view front frontal view of the ship and that's pretty much about it we eventually got another look of it a little bit better look at it from the ships of the line calendar that came out in I believe it was 2010 and this right here was the picture that was actually inside that calendar it's a little bit of a better render than what was inside the episode and it really was our first chance to actually kind of look at some of the details of that ship now and we're going to be going ahead and making this now I've made one before and I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you all right now and this is it this is what I've made before and this was created solely using just whatever little bit of details that we've had screenshots the calendar and what have you and this is a good the only problem is that I had with this is that the 3d mesh it's actually junk when I started creating it I really didn't know a whole lot blender wasn't new but they came out with the new version changing a lot of the commands I was making a lot of mistakes trying to repair it the I've learned those mistakes and towards the end of the building process I started fixing them but it was too late for me to fix a lot of the mistakes the topology was all wrong so when I tried to UV map the ship it wasn't really quite working it was very difficult to do so basically even though this gives me a great idea of what I think the ship looks like, it's basically junk. So we're going to go ahead and delete that and start all over again. Now, before I get started, I want to go ahead and say that this is not my favorite ship. A lot of fans out there do not like the way the ship looks, and I agree with them. But just because it's not my favorite ship doesn't mean that I don't think it's a ship worthy enough to try to recreate. The thing that interests me about the ship was that you didn't really have a lot of details that you could see inside the ship from from the television show. There was a lot that was left to the imagination, and that is what kind of interests me. So I actually was thinking, can I recreate this and try to make this you know, as close to what they originally intended to design it as, using only the few shots of the ship that we had? So I started doing that several years ago, and once again, all I ever used was this screenshot right here, and on top of that, I used some screenshots from the episode that showed the underside. Now, I know some of y'all are probably going to say, well, but they did indeed release a couple of additional screenshots showing it from the back and from underneath, and that's okay. The problem that I have with it that makes me almost want to not call those screenshots canon is... If you look at the shot specifically from underneath and compare that to screenshots from Azadi Prime, you can see that what we see in that episode that I believe is supposed to be the underside of the ship and what we see in the screenshot that was released later on, you know, the render later on, they don't match up. So because of that, I going to kind of throw away what was what was released later on as a 3d as a 3d snapshot now even the creator of the ship even went ahead and said that yes this thing was made real quick it wasn't really meant to have a lot of detail to be closely scrutinized because all they wanted was a ship he made them ship 
gave it to him. They threw it up there, and that was pretty much about it. Not a whole lot of detail was really put into it past that. So that's what I was wanting to do is try to put details, but I'm going to try to do as much as I can using the screenshots to only replicate, replicate what is there and try very little to throw in my own ideas. Now, I will be referencing, taking some ideas from those shots that is from the back and from underneath, but not terribly. 90% of the work that I'm going to be doing is going to be utilizing the screenshot that's right, oops, that's right in the here, and also the screenshots from the episode. So let me go ahead and get that started. I will go ahead and close this out and open up a new um, instance of Blender and set that up, and I will be back. All right, and here we are. I just went ahead and opened up another instance of Blender, and I just kind of worked around on this, got it, everything set up, and I think I'm, for the most part, ready to go. I had to set up a couple of cameras and a couple of light sources with inside the scene, especially this particular camera right here, which I had to try to get as close as I can to match I mean, with this picture here, when they rendered it, they had to put a camera actually inside the screen in relation to the model. So I tried to do the best I could to match it. Uh, mostly, I went ahead and I took the very center of the workspace, placed it along the center line of the ship, or estimate, estimate center line of the ship, and the y-axis is right alongside the center line of the ship going from the, what is this? bow and stern of the ship I believe my nautical terms are a little bit rusty at this moment so we're gonna go ahead and get started first things first what I normally do is I'm going to get started with the saucer section so I'm going to try to find a spot in the space that is going to be relatively close to the center line of the saucer section but I'm still going to have to try to stay along this y-axis. Let me see. And center line should be, let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try there, so... Let's go ahead and add a circle. And now we're going to go ahead and start to scale it. Slowly but surely trying to, oops, wrong one. Now here I can tell this is not quite adding up. So let's go ahead and move it. There we go. Yep, and we're getting pretty close. Don't quite like how it's adding up right there. Let's move it up and down a little bit. Try to get it to where it starts along the center line of the proposed saucer section because I believe you know what, let me move this into a different layer. There we go. Because so I believe that this little detail right here, no, okay, never mind. Yeah, right here is going to be kind of the very edge of the saucer section. So go ahead and do that. Well, we're good there. So close. All right. This part does tend to be a little bit tedious, but I think we're going to be pretty close. It looks like it's coming a little bit off the edge right there. Yeah, it is. I might have to go back and adjust that a little bit later. But anyways, um, for the most part, at least on this side, it looks like it is. Let's try shrinking it down just a little bit.
tell you what, we'll need to beat them halfway. Actually, I like that right there. All right, there we go. So, kind of governing from this view right here, that should be the shape of the saucer section. So, we're going to go ahead and go into edit mode right here. And just to give me a, f a few extra, to kind of make this a little bit more rounded, because I want to go ahead and try to do this as a kind of a high poly mesh, we are going to go ahead and subdivide. And let us go ahead and, would it be smooth? There we go. And there we go. All right, we're good to go. So that's our baseline right there for the saucer section. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is, obviously there's going to be some sort of edge that drops off here. I don't think it's going to come to a very tapered point. I'm sure it's going to come kind of down along the top of the saucer section, straight down and come across. So we're going to go ahead and go into our left view. Okay, we're going to select all those vertices and extrude them down. Whoops, I said down just a little bit. Oop, might be a bit too much. Let's go to a wireframe on this. Oops, wrong one. And. I think we're going to be pretty close with that. Let's just go up a little bit more. And there we go. That should be kind of the edge of the ship right there. All right. There it is. All right. I'm going to go ahead and kind of continue working on this a little bit just to kind of get some of these details ironed out just a bit and what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to kind of gradually because the way I would like I look at this and y'all might probably disagree with me a little bit but this area right here because it has all the windows is going to be sloped you know just a little bit with a nice fine curve this area here, because there's no windows, I'm going to guess is flat. And then right here, we have more windows again. It's going to be sloped again. So you're going to have a little bit of a slope, then flat, and then a little bit of a slope again. But it's going to be very, very subtle. You won't, you probably won't see a whole lot of depth. If we look at every one of these windows and think, okay, this right here is... is you know, a floor, here's a floor, here's a floor, here's a floor. We're going to have to try to fit as several floors. One, two, three, maybe one, two, three, four. Four floors on each one of these little subdivision areas, where there's, or the areas where there's subdivision off decks. That's why decks, that's what they're called. So the same thing here. One, two, three, four. And there's the third subsection or a second subsection, one, two, three, four with this other one, one, two, three, four for this one. And then this is flat. And then we got one, two, three, four. I'm going to go ahead and say there's still four decks on each one of these. And we now have one, two, three, maybe four subdivisions right there. So four decks per subdivision. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seven subdivisions so top portion should be 24 decks and then it'll probably be 24 decks below the bottom of it so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i will cut right back in when i get done all right i had to go back and adjust the camera a little bit because nothing was really quite working out the deeper i got into the project but as of right now i think i pretty much got it <clears throat> excuse me so, yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is how I think the profile looks. You have, it tapers up slowly. I'm going to try to make this a bit more rounded. And then it flattens out, and then it comes up again. 
this is going to be a bit more routed. And then you have this dome right here. So now when I started thinking about the purpose of what everything is, um, this part right here, I'll tell you right now. I mean, most of the ship I've kind of got an idea, but this part, though, I'm going to keep as kind of like a, um, not necessarily an observatory, but um, actually, I really don't know what I'm going to make that be. I'll figure it out a little bit later. Before, I originally had it like it was like a, like a habitat agricultural dome, you know, and even though there was all this light coming through, it was actually kind of like a, it was a one-way glass that allowed certain light to come in, but not light to go out, similar to those gold-plated shields that you see on the astronauts' helmets. Uh, but I might end up changing about what that's going to be for. But yeah, um, I think for the most part, this is a good place to get started. Everything seems to be lining up accordingly, and I am happy with that for right now. So we'll go ahead and I'm going to take a break right now and next time I come in I'm going to I'm going to off camera work on smoothing this out just a little bit more I'll probably put on next time on the camera add in some segments some details on this saucer section and we'll start laying in some primitive shapes that will get us pretty much figured out how the body's going to be laid out well thank you for watching and I will see you next time